Flood risk can and does change over time. Flood risk change for many reasons. New development, changes in levee classification, and environmental changes, just to name a few. As a result, FEMA is updating flood hazard maps across the country. These new flood maps, also known as Digital Flood Insurance Rate Maps, or DFIRMs, show flood risk at a property-by-property -property level. So what happens when new maps are issued in your community? Well, many property owners may face changes to the assigned flood risk zone for their homes and businesses. If the building is mapped out of a high-risk area, the flood insurance costs will likely decrease. If it is mapped into the high-risk area, it may require the purchase of flood insurance if the building is secured by a loan through a federally regulated or insured lender. This is Melanie Graham with H2O Partners, here to talk to you, the floodplain manager, on how to address questions about the implications of map changes on the cost of flood insurance. As a community point of contact for the National Flood Insurance Program, you may be asked, how does this new zone or change in the base flood elevation affect my insurance policy cost? Although it may be wise to redirect the property owner to his or her insurance agent, it is also important that you have a general understanding of two processes that can benefit a property owner in your community who has recently been impacted by a map change. In this short video, I'll introduce you to grandfathered rating and to the newly mapped procedure. Let's talk about how grandfathered rating works first. When it comes to insurance, risk has a direct effect on premium. For example, if someone is purchasing automobile insurance and they have several speeding violations, it will impact the rate. Well, flood insurance is similar. The flood zone that the property is in has an impact on how much the property owner will pay for flood insurance. However, the NFIP's grandfather rating acts as an exception. It's been around for many years, and here's how it works. Grandfathering allows property owners to lock in flood zone and base flood elevation information from a previous flood map when that rating approach is more favorable. It does it in two ways, using what is called the continuous coverage rule as well as the built-in compliance approach. The continuous coverage rule applies to property owners who buy a policy before the map revision and continue to renew it without a break in coverage. By doing that, they lock in the previous flood zone or even the previous base flood elevation. This part of the rule applies to all buildings in your community. But what if a property owner doesn't buy flood insurance before the new map revision? Well, there is a second chance for them to benefit from grandfathered rating. This second chance option is called the built-in compliance rule. If a building is constructed in compliance with a specific flood insurance rate map, then it may use the map's zone or base flood elevation at the time of construction as the rating approach if it is more favorable. In order to qualify, a property owner will need to provide their insurance agent proof of the previous zone or base flood elevation. That's where you come into play. Although FEMA's website provides historical map information, many property owners may look to their local floodplain manager for assistance with finding the old map or base flood elevation. Keep in mind that this part of the rule typically applies to newer buildings constructed after your community's first flood insurance rate map. Now let's switch our focus to the second process that could benefit a property owner when a map change occurs, the newly mapped procedure. Effective April the 1st of 2015, the newly mapped procedure went into effect. How does this impact the property owner, your constituent? Here's the good news. Following a map revision, the property that has mapped from low to moderate risk flood zone to a special flood hazard area may be eligible to receive a preferred risk premium rate for the first year. At the policy's first renewal, 
the rate will begin transitioning to full risk, subject to the 18% cap called for in the Homeowner Flood Insurance Affordability Act of 2014, also known as HFIA. How does the newly mapped procedure work? It works in three ways. One, properties newly mapped into an SFHA on or after April the 1st of 2015. Buildings are eligible for the newly mapped procedure if flood insurance is effective within 12 months of the map revision. Remember the preferred risk policy eligibility extension. A property newly mapped into an SFHA between October the 1st of 2008 and March 31st of 2015 is eligible for HIFIA newly mapped procedure if the applicant obtains coverage that is effective before April the 1st of 2016. The preferred risk policy eligibility extension policies already in effect before April the 1st of 2015 must be renewed with the newly mapped procedure on their first effective date on or after April the 1st of 2015. What happens if flood insurance isn't effective within 12 months of the MAP revision? The property owner is still eligible for the grandfathering option we discussed earlier. However, the first year premium will typically be lower using the newly mapped procedure compared to the grandfathering option. Let's look at a couple of examples together. Susan's home was mapped from a non-special flood hazard area, Zone B, into an SFHA, an AE zone, when Fargo, North Dakota had a map change effective January the 16th of 2015. Susan purchased flood insurance for the first time on September the 1st, 2015. Does Susan qualify for the newly mapped procedure policy? In this case, Susan does qualify for the newly mapped procedure through March the 31st of 2016. Those properties that were newly mapped into the special flood hazard area between October the 1st of 2008 and March 31st of 2015 are eligible for the newly mapped procedure if the applicant obtains coverage that is effective before April the 1st, 2016. Let's change our scenario for Fargo, North Dakota. Again, Susan's home was mapped into the special flood hazard area from Zone B to Zone AE as a result of a map change effective April 1st of 2015. Susan purchased flood insurance for the first time on April 2nd of 2016. Now in this case, does Susan qualify for the newly mapped procedure policy? The correct answer is no. Susan's policy was effective more than a year after the new map went into effect. Therefore, she is not eligible for the newly mapped procedure. However, Susan may still qualify for the grandfathered rating option. While you aren't expected to provide rating information to property owners within your community, it is important to know that these provisions exist and can provide options to reduce premiums after a map change. So when maps are updated in your community, refer inquiring eligible property owners to their insurance agents and or the FloodSmart website at floodsmart.gov for up-to-date information about these cost-saving approaches to minimize the impact of the new maps. This is Melanie Graham at H2O Partners, hoping you gain some additional knowledge and thanking you for your interest in the National Flood Insurance Program.